Thank you. All right. Um, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for being here this morning and uh, giving me this opportunity to be uh, talking to all of you for uh, roughly about 40 to 50 minutes. Um, I would like to call and invite my uh, panelist uh, for today, where we'll be having a discussion uh, on the topic uh, about the marketing abyss and uh, how brilliant basics is one of the most important part of any marketing activity that you are doing for yourself, for your clients, for, or, or if you're a tech partner. So first, uh, I would like to invite uh, Krishna. Krishna is in charge of Sansan's global marketing department in Singapore. He's Sansan's first non-Japanese hire. His mandate is to build framework for Sansan and spearhead global marketing practice. Please welcome Krishna. My second uh, panelist is Jonathan Yi. He is head of digital marketing, APAC, and chief marketing officer for Huawei smartphones. Jonathan has, over a period of three years, developed the strategies leading to talented teams across digital, PR, content, social and integrated marketing as they go head in head, with industry incumbents like Samsung and Apple growing market share and driving revenue um, for uh, the consumer brands that has enabled APAC to become the fastest growing market in the region. The company has also surpassed Apple globally to become second largest smartphone maker in the world on quarter one 2019 shipments. Prior to Jonathan joining Huawei, he was uh, part of Starwood Hotels before the acquisition, af right after the acquisition of Marriott, driving social, mobile, emerging technologies for over 320 properties across 11 luxury and lifestyle brands in the region. While his stint at Starwood, he had multiple award-winning campaigns that he implemented and demonstrated real growth for digital ROI on content, social, and performance marketing. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Jonathan E. Right, the please. All right. So, gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, joining with me today. Um, before we start today's discussion and session, um, I would like to have an understanding of who's in the room, who are who are we talking to today. So, all the tech partners, raise your hand and say hi. Um, all, all, the, all the people representing brands uh, of, of uh, consumer or B2B, raise your hand. All right, okay. And, uh, and the rest of the people, which is um, about any agencies, marketing, tech, so on and so forth, raise your hands. All right. All the people who haven't raised their hand, the alcohol starts only at 5 o'clock, so what are you doing here? <laughs> this is called a connection. Um, in today's world, when we say things are so complicated, um, there are so much a fragmentation of how audiences, consumers, brands um, in interact, engage, and spend time. Uh, we term that as a complex world. Uh, the challenge here is it, the world has not gotten complicated. The challenge here is people, human, have become complicated. Uh, what lacks here is a genuine connection between a brand and, and your prospect consumer. And when that connection is strong, you would find a lot of, wo a lot of things working for your brands, is what someone said at one, one point of time. So hence, a lot of, a lot of these tech partners and, and, and friends at Facebook and Google came up with metrics like likes, shares, comments, tweets, retweets, saves, which was a factor of determining how connected are you with your consumers. And when you looked at your bottom line or the top line, you found that even with 100 likes and 1,000 shares and comments, your sales did not pick up. Your product was not picked up from the shelf. So what was the reason for it? If you're talking about this part of the world in Singapore and Southeast Asia, your boss will never fire you for putting an ad on Straight Times. Straight Times is the le leading newspaper in Singapore. But the readership for Straight Times has been going down, and magazines and print has been going down. But your boss, who reads that newspaper every morning, would come out of his desk and say, job well done. What lacks here 
is a connection with your audience because you think you're doing the world of best of the work. But eventually, do your consumers really understand what you're trying to talk? And if you're trying to sell something to the consumer, the consumer today is smart enough because he has a wealth of information in his hands for him to access information to evaluate by him or herself, saying that how genuine is this proposition? And you have to ask yourself, if you are a brand today, if you are a tech partner today, you have to ask yourself, how genuine is that connection that you have with your consumer? And that genuine connection is what sets apart brands of today and the future versus the brands which are making a lot of noise in the market and then after three years you don't hear, uh, hear about them. So genuine connection is the v one single most important factor when it comes to creating a brand, sustaining a brand, and talking to the future consumers of the brand today. So that's enough of me talking of what this whole discussion is going to be about. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let the gentlemen who have come here uh, give their point of views, have a discussion uh, on, uh, on why is there a gap, why is the connection missing with, between consumers and brands, and what have they done in their field uh, to be so successful in, in their own products. At the, at the same time, they will be giving us point of views of how competitors have been doing a good job, or maybe even brands have been doing a good job. At the end of the session, we perhaps, if the time permits, we can have a couple of questions. So if you have any questions, make sure you're writing it down so that we can open the forum as well uh, for the last five to seven minutes of this discussion. All right? So let's jump into this right away. Um, I think the first thing that we would like to start with is, what is this gap all about? Why are some brands still struggling to have gaps between consumers and the product and the marketing. I mean, today, the technology has made so much of development, but there's still a sort of gap between your, what, your, what your prospect consumer wants and what kind of propositions you have, all right? So who would like to go first? Jonathan, you want to go first? Um, can can ev everyone hear me? Can. Okay, great. Yep. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I think the main thing that brands generally have a problem with is um, trying to find that balance, basically, uh, between, first of all, wanting to make that sale um, and wanting to tell you about their brand all the time. Um, and I think that's the part that a lot of the, you know, management in general struggle to, to find a balance with because it's really no longer about just pushing you know, your brand and your product and your features down, you know, our co consumers' faces. Uh, it's really now about the consumer and it's about, you know, finding that value, you know, finding, finding content or finding, you know, making that, that, that genuine connection with, with, that, with that customer and trying to assess a need. Uh, so I think that's, that's the part that, um, you know, most brands today, I would say, struggle with. Um, you know, they struggle at first to build that trust with the consumer, uh, and uh, you know, they and they fall back to what we call, you know, what I like to call bad habits. You know, just consistently pushing your brand messaging down the, the throats of um, you know your consumer. And and frankly speaking, in in in, uh, in our industry, in the consumer tech space today, you see it everywhere. You know, whether it's Apple, whether it's Samsung, uh, whether it's even us in Huawei we always tend to focus on, oh, the best camera, the best chip, the best performance, um, you know, greatest colors, but what does that all mean for the consumer? You know, but at the end of the day, we all still fall back to the same things that we know, and that's pushing product down your throat, whether you like it or not. So I think as marketers today, we often find, um, you know, we, we we are in a position whereby we need to, you know, strike a balance between our consumer and, of course, you know, our business objectives. All right. That's, that's a very fair way to say it, actually. Uh, so actually, one of the key things which I learned uh, over my journey in marketing is what gets seen gets sold. And obviously, as you said it, uh, Jonathan, I think uh, the key essence is to justify the cons to the consumer or the person who's seeing your ad, what's in it for me. So I actually side with you on this. So eventually, it's all about how does our communication help the customer? 
and when you come to um, making this connection between the brand and the customer, the most important thing is uh, if you want this person to stay with you for longer, this customer is going to interact with your brand in many ways through your digital channels, through your point of sales, your sales team in case of the B2B, maybe onboarding and service teams. So the key point is they are going to feel something um, and they're going to make a connection. So the communication strategy in this case, uh, I would say has to really be simple and it has to be structured and it has to really be quite focused. Um, so as a brand, we need to understand what is it um, we are giving as an experience to our customers. If we are able to achieve it end to end across the multiple touch points, I think that's a job well done. Uh, so let's keep it simple and what gets seen. And then finally, I'd say uh, one of the challenges is with the amount of, let's say, tech players or partners that we have in the industry, uh, it's really hard to structure all of it in a simple manner so that your, your C level or the board is able to digest it. There's a language difference, the way they perceive it versus the way the specialists actually roll it out is they're talking a different language. So I think that's like three big differences or challenges for me, in my opinion. Right, and yeah. I think I think you I think you all spoke about trust. I think you all spoke about not pushing it down the consumer's throat, right? But how does how does it work inside the organization when, let's say, there's a marketing lead which has a sales target but also has a budget, and he knows that he or she knows that the budget needs to be fulfilling that sales target, that marketing goals, objectives that is being fulfilled. Um, how, how is it that the balance needs to be, needs to have a, uh, between how much you push, how much of sales, how much of you forcing your consumers, and if we know these things, why is it that, you know, uh, the CEOs or the, or the C-suites or the, or the board of directors of, of a company do not see this being translated to them? Um, so I can speak from experience to say that uh, not all the time you're going to get management. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, the board sometimes, um, even though they all understand the importance of digital and conversions, uh, a lot of times they just fall back on what they know best. You know, so what you said just now in the very beginning, and it's very true, um, I've run many digital campaigns in my lifetime. And I've always got questioned on the reporting, and you know, I, I give that same sort of onus to the agencies to prove results to me. But when it comes to running a print ad or something on TV, <laughs> um, no one questions anything that we put out. And every time we do that, it's always like, yeah, well done. They're so happy to see that. You know, I, I'm sure eventually, you know, sooner hopefully than later, we are going to see a shift in that. Um, but especially in legacy organizations, traditional organizations, um, where you don't have the end-to-end, -end, you know, in one place, um, you know, you are going to see this sort of, I mean, this is a challenge right now, you know. I think, I think that's a very fair point of how the organizations needs to evolve. Uh, it's, m it's not about how marketing needs to evolve, but it's, it's also about how the decision makers, the board of directors, needs to understand and they need to be shown the value that how digital is reaching the consumers, how, what kind of matrix you can report on. Because think of it that way, when you put a print ad out, when you put a TV ad out, there's, lo there's hardly any one-to-one any -one conversion, one-to-one -one reporting that you can put in. So uh, I think that's a very fair point and I think organization needs to evolve is the, is, is the crux of how today brands and products needs to evolve because the moment the organization is not evolving even if we have the strongest product we have seen use cases where the products are you know isolated in the whole market and eventually shutting down even if you have a very strong proposition fairly said actually uh, one of my first experiences um, when I went to the agency side was in Dell uh, so we used to do a lot of actually uh, I'm going to come and connect um, what Jonathan was talking about, not um, both not being able to see the results or not being able to manage the metrics. So in my opinion, one of the challenges which I feel, and actually at Samsung we solve it quite uh, aggressively, um, is by looking at key metrics. So quite often, um, the marketing department is mandated to operate on maybe three or five metrics. Actually, it's not important at all. So <laughs> if you think about it, let's say the board gives you a sales target. 
and let's say you are using just two media let's say you're using print and let's say you're using search ads in this case so it's quite easy if you are not doing a brand message but you're doing a performance marketing uh, activity uh, let's take an example of b2c which is kind of easier to define um, so at Dell, what we did was uh, basically um, we had a print ad and we had a toll free number attached to every print ad. And we were able to monitor the number of calls that came to each number, which automatically tells us the media, the page, and that. Plus, the conversion would be recorded on the back end. Now, when we did a print ad, we obviously had these search ads running, etc. So the metrics we looked at was basically, in very simple terms, Google query volume. The second metrics we looked at was basically attributed conversions, let's say on search. And then the final metric we would look at is actually unattributed. And we always saw that when there's a print activity, site visits would go up, uh, the toll free numbers volume will go up, and then we could actually monitor and measure. So in doing so, and looking at the minimum number of metrics, we were able, at least the company um, Dell, which I'm talking about, was able to optimize. At Sansan, what we do is we try to always negotiate with the board and ask them, what is must have and what is good to have? Um, and actually, it works quite well. And we are able to actually convince uh, that, hey, you know what, this is how we can operate and uh, take a more simplistic approach to solve the challenge of measuring and connecting results across the departments. Absolutely, and, and uh, in a way, we are talking about the second topic, yeah. which is how are brands um, fulfilling this gap? How are, uh, in your experience, or the experience that you have seen for other brands, how have they fulfilled the gaps that we are talking about between, it can be about media attribution, or it can be about the communication of how the product and the brand needs to talk. So I think you gave a very good example of how Dell was trying to bridge that gap with uh, things which are not measurable, but then coming up with some more measurable matrix. Jonathan, have you seen something in your, in your experience, be it yourself or be it some other brands, trying to bridge any gap, be it on the media side, communication side, also on the product side? Uh, well, we are actually working on something right now. Um, I, I don't think it's a secret because, like, frankly speaking, this is old tech, I feel. But, you know, um, we're currently, you know, we don't have an e-commerce site for Huawei. Uh, you know, it's very unlike Apple. Apple has its own e-commerce site built in. You can just buy directly from mm -hmm. Apple. Uh, so it's a lot easier that way, actually, if you had an e-commerce site because you can, you know, track conversions all the way and measure your ROI. Um, so for us, what's important is it's driving footfall and how do we use um, you know, our current digital marketing ads to drive footfall to stores. So a uh, project that we're currently working on right now um, is really just you know, using lead gen ads on Facebook um, you know, and just kind of measuring and driving people down to the store uh, to actually take a look at our phones. Uh, and we actually do that by, you know, partnering with Facebook and some of the other um, developer partners uh, and coming up with technology to actually just um, ensure that we, uh, each promoter at each of the stores get a notification on, on, on an app uh, that tells them somebody has just filled out, you know, a lead gen ad, come down to the store, you know, for, for a test drive or, uh, you know, and it's taking it out of the automobile, um, you know, industry, right? Uh, and come on down and, you know, get a free gift, you know, if you come on down. And we can at least measure the footfall and measure the ROI and the effectiveness of, the, of that lead gen ad that we're spending with Facebook, right? So it's just trying to close that loop, you know, and then obviously eventually making, um, you know, closing that loop with sales again. But today it's all kind of manual, actually, if you think about it. Because again, you know, we're very traditional in terms of our industry, right? So that's how we try to address the gaps of the technology that we have today. Which is f fair enough. I think, I think from the agency's perspective, um, agencies are so at times tied up in reporting on things which does not really matter to brands. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you stop, rep and when you start reporting on on metrics that is not really s an important identifier of the success, uh, people take decisions incorrectly because people take a decision based on what information you feed them in. Okay. But but if if on a print, you're able to say that the number of calls that were came as a result of this print or number of Google search queries that came, you would find a direct measurement of print and, uh, and, and your online sales. Similarly, uh, like Jonathan mentioned about as to with the lead ads, I think if you're able to demonstrate 
to the to the board to your to your CEO that you know how footfall retails are being driven is as a result of a top you know above the line uh, digital marketing activities. A uh, lot of times you would find that you are succeeding more on those conversations internally mm. um, uh, than trying to uh, report on uh, vanity metrics or talking about uh, software conversion points. So absolutely, I think these are some gaps that uh, that that needs to be fulfilled. Um, be it on on the media side, creative side, product side, and communication side. So absolutely, I think I think a lot of times a lot of stress is given to personalization, dynamic creatives, a creative at the right place, right time, right moment. Do we have anyone in the audience who have done it for their brands or have had any tech partners who has done any dynamic personalization of creatives or, or messaging? ever in, in one of their campaigns? Brilliant. So this is the point I'm trying to drive, is, is my next question. Do consumers today really expect mass customization, mass personalization? And is that even a genuine possibility? And ensuring that we are giving the right consumer experience from end to end while we are trying to f fix one sphere of the whole uh, customer journey? Well, I can actually take that question from a hypothetical perspective uh, to explain this scenario. So the first premise is we are in APAC, and actually if you look at this region, the most amount of diversity in terms of culture and convention happens here. So under that premise, I think personalization is especially hard to achieve, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to explain that. The second attribute I would say, uh, which would help you in deciding how much personalization is distance from the customer. So imagine if you have an app business, you're actually sitting in the pockets of the customer, you know more about him. Whereas, let's say in a B2B process, you're far away, you don't really know what he's uh, doing, or you can't measure his behavior in real time. So let's take this as an example. If I am to do personalization, let's say on a channel of marketing automation, and I'm mandated to do it on APAC, so obviously uh, the, I have a CRM which could say, dear first name, um, now imagine if I'm getting leads uh, from, let's say Singapore. Well, in Singapore, we'll frequently see names like Sean Wong Hei Tai. Obviously somebody who's non-Singaporean wouldn't understand it, but Sean is actually a good name. But the CRM will automatically attach Sean Wong and Hei Tai, which is also a name. Uh, now imagine if I'm getting another lead, which is, happens to be a Japanese customer, but he has given a lead on an English site. Let's say his name is Kazun or Ifukuta. So Kazunori Fukuda is likely to appreciate us more if we said Fukuda-san. Whereas if we were to personalize for Sean, it's likely if we did a like personalization just based on first name, because our CRMs can't handle it, Sean Wong would be like, hey, why is this guy you know, taking my full name? So I would say, depending on your distance from the customer, you really want to take a stand and decision that, hey, I don't want to do this, and uh, you know, because there's a risk. Mm. There's a risk involved, and it's not going to be acceptable. Mm. Uh, now, if I take a you know, contrasting point of view, let's say you're in the hands of the um, customer with a mobile app, most likely it's customized, um, so you can actually record all the various fields. At which point in time, it's OK to say, dear Sean, or Kazunori, or Kazoo, or whatever. So I say, uh, brand, what I'm trying to say here is we have to be really careful how much personalization we do. Uh, it could affect the journey and experience and connection in a very drastic manner if you don't do it right, especially for APAC. That's right. what we need. Right. Jonathan? Um, I'm really just talking off my cuff here because I think this is just from personal experience and I'm sure you all have your views on this too. Um, I think to not have personalization and customization these days would be sort of you know, bad user experience because you, you've come to expect it. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, we do know of, I mean, we've been in situations whereby we, you know, we've worked with the likes of dynamic creatives and all that. And when you get it right as the consumer, you're happy. Yeah. But most of the time you don't get it right. Most of the time after you've made a purchase online, you continue to see the same ad or the same item following you about. And you're like, why? I've already bought it, <laughs> right? And, and, and I, we, I've had this conversation like five, six years ago. It's still the same, <laughs> you know? So 
Uh, I'm sure nowadays the technology has gotten to the point that you know we've 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 come, but it takes effort to build, and you also need the right partners and the right agencies to also see that. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, as a client, I'm making my you know the job for my agency partners easier for for them, right? By by setting up all these, you know, DCO frameworks and and solutions mm -hmm. and platforms. Um, so I think right now we're at a stage right, right now that we're kind of limited by what technology has given us. Um, if you get it right, hey, you're lucky. Yeah. You know, if you if you don't get it right, and that's most of the time, you know, you think as a marketer, ah, oh, just waste of money, right? Mm. You could be doing it so much better, right? So I, I I still think there's ways to go. Um, I don't think that's the perfect answer, and I haven't seen a brand today do it really really well. Um, you know, so. Uh, I mean that's my that's my take on it. I'm I'm not sure how you. you, you I actually agree. Um, so I've been looking for martech solutions for mm -hmm. a long time, which uh, don't cost me a lot of money. Um, so like, uh, you know, once the customer has become your customer. Let me know when you found that solution. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the one which I'm using is good, but it, you need to top up a lot of money to get the customer audience matching. Okay. And, uh, so we try to actually tell uh, our agencies that hey, you know what? Once somebody has submitted a lead, don't try to follow them again and again. So I agree, there's a gap in the Matic space in this case. Mm. Yep. But in that case, um, do you think that the personalization should be sitting on the communication side more, or can it also be on the product side, which can be the differentiating factor? So uh, this, this is exactly going back to what I was trying to say. Um, it should be on the product side. If you know your product best, so which means you can build it for personalization. In which case is perfect scenario. Uh, on the advertising side, however, I do um, say that take the side of caution where possible. Mm. That's my opinion. I think not a lot of brands have the luxury, especially if you're a small brand um, or a brand that does not have a lot of experience doing it uh, or don't see the value in doing it. Then you still have to rely on, mm. you know, third party or partners to, mm. to do that for you. Fair enough. Um, so again, there's no. I don't feel that that's a perfect answer. You know, at the end of the day, of course, if you could own the entire ecosystem, then you should. But at the end of the day, you would still need to reach out to third parties to really make sure that you get that context surrounding that personalization. Uh, and even if you own the ecosystem, the, these systems don't talk to each other in the same language, yeah. which brings in additional challenge. Yeah, so we could be in the room a long time if we continue <laughs> talking about this, but. Yeah, yeah I think, um, I think, as the world progresses in terms of technology, all the wall gardens that we have, like Facebook doesn't talk to Google, Google doesn't talk to this API, API doesn't talk to this partner. I think when those silos are being broken, you would find that the consumers are the ones who will benefit the most. And uh, it is because of some restrictions being put in by these vendors, these partners, uh, where the integration and the data is being so uh, sacrosanct uh, this is where ultimately the consumer is the one who, who suffers. And uh, as a brand, I think it's important for us to take a stand that how much of personalization you want to do, how much of you want to risk it, because you, you, you don't want to be calling a Japanese mm -hmm. with a non-Japanese way of addressing. And if you get that wrong, you are kind of not starting your relationship on, on, a, on a very very right note. So I think, like you said, there's no perfect answer to this, but I think it's <coughs> important to know that if your communications are personalized, is your product also personalized? But if your, if your product is the same vanilla and does not really differentiate from one, t one audience to another, what are you doing on the, c on the communication and the creative side by personalizing? Because both of them needs to match. If you're talking about an automated car with a color of your choice because Google knows what's your favorite color, your website should also be having that same color of the car that you're trying to demonstrate. Most of the times, what you tell people and what's in your store, what's on your retail store, is totally different. This causes a problem in the connection that we are trying to say. And uh, this is a genuine connection. You, you tell something, mm -hmm. but when, when, the, when the consumer says, right, let me lead into this, uh, and they find completely different um, product, completely different service, this is where there's a disjoint in the whole consumer journey, whole consumer experience, and the trust that we are trying to develop. And um, I think, like you said, smaller brands with smaller budgets, uh, with smaller investments, they try to go after each and every opportunity. And this is where it, it at times spoils the play for a bigger brand who's trying to ensure that the consumer comes first between uh, the tech, the personalization, 
um, and uh, any any sort of um, customization that the brand is trying to do, right? So, assuming assuming that today brands have deciphered what is the best personalization possible. Assuming, let's say, people in this room have identified what is that content which is right for your audience. Assuming you have figured out what's the best SEO, SEM strategy for your brand. But there is still a gap. Still, the consumers are having a double choice, a double think of how they should be interacting, what should they be spending, what is the right fit for their for their likes, needs, preference. So I think what I would like you all to do next is there are, there are a set of things which are hygiene factors. And assuming you're an SME today, assuming you're a smaller brand or even a bigger brand, what is a priority as, as a marketing lead in your functions uh, when it comes to ensuring that the whole sphere of digital marketing is done on a brilliant basics perspective, right? So on the screen, we have some options of what's a priority for a marketing lead in today's world. And if you have to prioritize, what would that be in today's world and what is relevant? So just so that everybody is very clear, we're talking about is better website or app experience the primary focus? Is being more digitally discoverable is the primary focus, assuming you're doing great work on Google and SEO? Is it better customized message outreach, which, which is the gap, assuming you're doing personalization at scale and all those jargons? Is it use of more blockchain, because that's the buzzword? I've had a client which says, hey, let's build an app. I'm like, why? And then he didn't have an answer. Is it better content? because content marketing is the next buzzword, or was the buzzword three years back, and then you jumped on it, and then now you're figuring what is, the, what is the ROI, or it worked for you? Is it more use of AI and machine learning, which is another buzzword of the future? Is it better digital path to conversion? Or is it better societal sentiments? So as a marketing manager, you have two hands, two legs, and, and a team, hopefully, of five, seven, ten, two, one, or none. What's your priority in terms of fixing these things? And uh, where would you start and where would you deprioritize just to ensure that you're talking to this today's digital customer who is researching about you, who is taking 10 steps online before coming to your store and picking that product from the shelf? Who would like to go first? Um, I think John, I will okay. go first because I think, yeah, I mean, I. <laughs> I don't know I don't know the question. Yeah, I, um. So again, all these up here depend on your business and where you are at. Um, you know, I've had the, you know, I've had the privilege to work with bigger brands that are, you know, have established uh, good brand image and um, you know good products. Uh, but not necessarily in terms of, you know, um, a good website or path to conversion. Um, so just speaking from experience, um, three years ago when I joined Huawei, uh, the whole APAC team wasn't even buying search. <laughs> and I think, uh, Ashe, you know this because, you know, I approached you about it, but um, yeah, we were not discoverable. <laughs> so, and and uh, you know our competitors were eating our lunch, you know, and and you know then it was a whole like okay we need to convince our management, our country heads who are all salespeople, um, who have no idea why we need to spend money on Google uh, when we don't have an e-commerce site. So then you would have to convince them and make the case that hey, you know, the today's digital consumer or consumer, right, their path to purchase no longer is just about going to a store or going to a telco uh, and comparing the phones that you want to buy at the spot. You know, today's consumer reads 12 to 16 articles about the phones that they want to buy when they want to buy it. And the first thing that they do 
so they search for it. And if you're not there to capture that intent, if you're not there, someone else is going to eat your lunch. So for me, what was really important at the time, and I, I think a lot of com uh, companies today and organizations today don't even do this well, is of course, number one, invest you know, in the key platforms, so your Googles, your Facebooks, and most importantly, make sure that your website is up to scratch. Right? We weren't even tagging our website a few years ago. That's how scary it is. You know, we were spending millions, you know, maybe even a billion dollars on like things like celebrity endorsements. Um, but at the end of the day, when you were driving traffic to the site, you weren't able to leverage on the traffic that you were capturing. You weren't able to know who your audiences were. Mm. You know, and in the last three years since, you know, since the team has been formed and we've managed to grow our business just by focusing on these basics and, and fixing what was wrong, you know, and, and the results speak for themselves. So I'm, I'm a convert, right? I, I, I've seen the way it works. I've seen our, you know, these so-called brilliant basics actually, you know, uh, uh, bear fruit for us, for our business, you know, drive revenue, drive market share. It does work, yeah. Okay, and uh, very quickly, how would you rate if you had to take a decision based on the current scenario of, of let's say, managing Huawei? How would you rate in terms of priority for the options on the screen? Right now? Today? Yes, as of today. <sighs> <laughs> better society sentiments. <laughs> um, better content, right? Because I still think, like I said before in the past, um, you know, our industry is still a very traditional industry. If you look at the likes of Apple and Samsung, they're doing the same thing. And we're doing the same thing too, right? And we're really not making the genuine connection with our consumers. But what do brands like, you know, Nike and, you know, the likes of the Netflixes of the world, like what, what do they get right? They get that connection, right? They know how to create content that's, that, that's going to resonate with the audience. We're not doing that enough. You know, we're constantly doing what I said we are doing, right? Here's a picture of the phone. We have the best cameras. You know, we have sexy colors. You know, we have the best chipset. And there you go. That's our ad. That's our, our great content for you. Okay. So, right. so you we have a long way to go. Yeah. So you would rate society first and then being discoverable then being and then having a strong content. Yep. Right? Because I mean, I, I assume that we fixed our website already. So, <laughs> so, so yeah. Okay, uh, we have about 10 minutes. So, Krishna, your quick take on this. Very simple. So, actually, in my opinion, all of this is connected. Uh, uh, so, it's like a big lever. Marketing as a function is a big lever. Uh, it's a big machine uh, trying to lift, let's say, 40 ton loads. You have to actually manage which lever you press. So, I take away the discussions regarding discoverability, meaning um, you have to have some always on content in your target market look at what the sales are talking about and they, how they're able to convert, have the same content on your keywords, same content on your website, make it easy for people to convert, uh, like, okay, ask them the basic information and try to nurture them onward to get more information. Hmm. Uh, in terms of, uh, okay, I'm not going to make any opinion about use of blockchain, because in my opinion, that's not, uh, so proper Kaizen practice on this case is not available yet. Hmm. It's still too new for me. Hmm. In terms of customized message outreach, I think, uh, when we're trying to build a brand, uh, the same message has to be repeated mm. many times over and over. Mm. So I talk about like simplest message and make sure it happens across the entire funnel. So if you do a PR, get all of it done across your emails, uh, your sales messaging, wherever it exists. So in my opinion, I would say um, one is discoverable. Two, make sure your website and app experience matches <laughs> your discoverability or the other way around. I would say um, the third is better content Fourth is um, part to conversion. Uh, no opinion on blockchain. No opinion on AI <laughs> and machine learning. <laughs> and no opinion on society. Because society sentiments again, it keeps changing. Yeah. It, yeah. So machine and uh, machine learning and AI is again built by us. So <laughs> we can easily change it. Perfect. Yeah. And with the same options, can you identify very quickly for us what had to be done two years back, and what a marketer of today has to do today? So the same options. What had to be done two years back, three mm -hmm. years back, five years back, 
and what a marketer of today needs to do to make sure that his future is secured with his prospect cu customers, his future customers. Very quick take. Do you still think doing those brilliant basics is important, or do you think they need to do something else and prioritize first before and after fixing the basic things? So actually, I can take it already. So in my opinion, the first thing is to find the best technology you can find, uh, remove the good to haves, take a must have, try to measure it across, get that in, and actually that's already going to help you with machine learning and identifying mm. your content gaps, mm. uh, plus. Uh, be able to measure your PDC on path to conversion and app experience on conversion. So I think that's the number one. This is what we should have done long, long time back, not be legacy. <laughs> uh, um, of course, there's a technical problem with selecting the best MarTech you can yeah. select. There's so many. Look for evidence of product improvement. Get it on board. It. Perfect. That's Jonathan, it. very quick one. What do you think? Um, I, I mean, I'll just have a motherhood statement down here. I mean, know your customer. Right, whichever industry you're in today, know who your customer actually mm. is and what that path to purchase actually looks mm. like, and then optimize for that path of purchase. Right, because if you don't do that today, then you're gonna lose. That they're gonna drop into the gaps, basically. Right. Perfect. We're going to the last section. We have like five minutes, and uh, I want to tell you that if you think, if you think the consumers haven't faced disruption. And if you think disruption is for future, I can tell you that the disruption is already here. So a quick show of hands if you've used four out of six services here already, which has changed the way you spend time, which has changed the way you interact, which has changed the way you speak to your friends, family, the way you travel, the way you invest. Show of hands if you've used minimum four. That's 80% of the whole room. And this is exactly what I mean. The customer of, to, of, of, of yesterday was not in tune of these services, was not in tune on the way he was engaging with content, the way he was spending time. And this is what I mean. The disruption has happened in terms of consumers' time. If you're still trying to find consumer on the previous ways of finding them, your brand is losing out. And hence, one of the reasons why your market share or penetration is not going strong. So in the, in the last couple of minutes, uh, I'm going to leave you all with some of the future um, uh, forecast of what this technology, the audience, is going to be. Some of them is already here. Some of them is going to happen uh, in the next one to two years. And uh, perhaps uh, next year or same time, same day, we can come up here again, discuss, and see where is that investment. So taking some inspiration from the Netflix series uh, Black Mirror, where they look at the technology, they look at the future, and try to come up with uh, something really radical as to how technology will shape the future. I want to tell you what each of the channels would look like. And like I said, after a year of uh, time, we can come back here to the same stage, same place, and, and discuss to <coughs> where this technology is and have you used any one of it. So search. I think the panel said discoverability is the most important factor. Um, is your brand ready for voice search? A lot of times mm -hmm. you would find that people are going to be talking to their phones rather than using their thumbs to be typing. You would have Google Assistant talking about news in the morning while you're getting ready. So is your brand ready for future of the search? Social, um, I think, again, it's not going to be your thumbs that are going to be talking. It, it is about your eyes that, are, that, are, that is going to shape the future of social. It is how your brands are being discoverable in the AR function of the consumer. You would find that the homes with IOTs, with the 5G, and uh, ensuring that it is not just a, a unidimensional interaction, but you would find that a lot of 3D interactions are coming in, and the brands needs to be uh, there with the future customer. This is your child. This is your son. This is your niece, who is the future customer that we are talking about. And has your brand taken steps to make sure that you're future-proof? With the mass media um, uh, going down, like TV, like print, uh, the brand building opportunities for brand is going, to, is going down. So the only opportunity that the brands would be having to, to build a brand is a brand-to-brand -brand connection. So brands of the future will ensure that they are trying to find a brand of the same equity and uh, trying to uh, have a partnership of a long-term partnership, a genuine partnership which people would relate and correlate. The gone will be the time of TV, gone will be the time of mass communication, which was the time like five to seven years back. Personalization, SEO. If you're watching Netflix, you're already a part of it. Because you watch this series, you are given 
recommendation of what the future of the episodes is going to be, what kind of seasons you might be interested, what kind of other shows you would be looking. So personalization, SEO is already part of your life if you haven't realized. Um, take, a, take an instance of your Grab or your Uber. It's all personalized to what your location, how, what's your behavior, what's your usage behavior. So if your product today is not having the minimum personalization, you're losing out on customer delight, which Jonathan spoke briefly before. Um, today, there are so many content providers like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hoyu, View, so on and so forth. Um, and what you, would, what you would find in the future is how brands are unlocking non-gated content. Tomorrow, you won't be asking your friend for a Netflix password saying that, hey, I want to I I see the show, and uh, can, I, can I have your password? Uh, the future will be bundling of these services, bundling of these streaming services, and how brands will play a role in people's life because they are spending time away from TV. And last but not the least is the most underutilized um, factor of uh, talking to your consumers as fitness, as sports, plays an important role in your life. Uh, sports streaming service is currently highly dominated on televisions and it's highly um, uh, being focused only by few players. You would find that uh, streaming services like Netflix and Amazon will actually open up the sports streaming market and, uh, and make sure that the streaming of sports is something which is useful, something which is reaching to every mobile tablets, TVs, smart TVs, so on and so forth, and you don't necessarily have to go to your Fox Sports just for that. So the brands of the future will make sure that they have these elements covered in some way or the other. Again, like Jonathan and Krishna mentioned, depending on your brand purpose. Um, but it is the kind of brilliant basics that you need to think about yourself. Is it the brilliant basics that you want to do of the future, or is it the brilliant basics you want to do of the past? And uh, like, like the panelists said today, if you're not doing your basics correct, there is no point of talking about blockchain, AI, virtual learning, et cetera, et cetera, jargons. Uh, because consumers today expect seamless interactions, experience, and the moment the experience and the interactions is, is rocky, you'd find that the best of the brands and products are not surviving um, in, in the near future. So, Jonathan, Krishna, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. Um, I'm not sure how much time do we have. Do we have time for one, one audience question? One, okay, so we're going to have one audience question and uh, you can choose whom you want to direct this question to, Jonathan, Krishna, uh, or me. Uh, but uh, raise your hand if you have a question. We just have one question. Right, sir, gentlemen, I saw you first. <coughs> do, we, do we have a mic for him? Here. <laughs> okay, wow, fancy mic. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Daniel. I come from Jakarta, Indonesia. Uh, I'm interested with the kind of conclusion that you have that uh, basically the media will go everything to digital. So uh, to Jonathan and perhaps from the agency's perspective, uh, how do you see the future of conventional media like television and radio, for example? <coughs> do you still place advertisement with them? And uh, in the era of uh, you know Google search and SEM, uh, do you think also uh, that everything will go to them, to Facebook, and will you know, all the uh, advertisement <coughs> will go to them, or you also sell place to the other media uh, platforms? That's my question. Okay, let, let me take this. Jonathan, go for it. So, His um, favorite topic, I can tell you that. I, okay. <laughs> I, you know me so well. Yeah. <coughs> um, I, my experience, my, my whole life has been a digital marketer, performance <laughs> marketer. Uh, and I had the good fortune of coming to Huawei with massive budgets. So uh, when we first started off in Singapore, uh, our market share was like 2%. And uh, I had very little media budget to play with. So um, the outgoing marketing head used to only buy conventional media, TV, newspaper. And that was pretty much all that they could afford. They couldn't do anything else. What I did was I turned things around. Right. I know where our customers are going to be. So in Singapore, for example, penetration of digital and online is you know, more than 100%. Um, we made sure that we focused there first. So I maximized everything that we could on our online channels to do what we talked about today, the brilliant basics, correctly at first. Right? So we don't even have to do anything too fancy. 
we don't even have to invest too much. <coughs> but you're right, because our digital ecosystem is mainly, um, you know, 90% of our digital ecosystem today is Facebook and Google. So yes, you know, their budget mostly went to Facebook and Google, right? But we got that one right first. So we maximized what we could. Uh, it was then only after in the second year uh, when I was in Huawei that uh, we said, okay, now you've done so well, you've grown the business from the backs of digital, right? You know who your customers actually are. Here's extra budget. Go and invest it <laughs> in other things, right? Go and start building the brand uh, across Singapore. And that's what I did. And it was very easy to spend that money. It went so fast. Uh, it was really, it went so fast, wow. Um, and, you know, we started buying bus ads, you know, cinema ads, newspapers. We went on TV, we sponsored stuff. It was great because did we see an uptick in sales? Yes, absolutely. Did we see an uptick in our digital KPIs? Our share of voice went through the roof. Our website traffic went through the roof, right? So am I a convert now? Do I believe in integrated marketing? Absolutely. Right? Do I believe that you can get audiences that weren't available to you before on digital offline? Yes, uh, definitely. Right? So I still do feel if you have the luxury of doing it all, then of course, you know, take the integrated approach, make sure that you cover all bases. A lot of brands and organizations today do not have that luxury. And if you don't have that luxury, you have to focus on what's most efficient. So for brands that are growing or trying to grow market share, and you have a very, very limited pot of media budget, focus on where your customers are actually at and try to maximize that as much as possible. So, so I hope you've, I've answered that question for you. Sure. Yeah, that there's a place and a time for, for everything. Uh, but I absolutely do believe that it works. How, how many of you are here from, from Singapore? Can I just have a show of hands, locals? You guys seen the $54 phone that we launched recently for um, seniors in Singapore, we only ran one print ad on One Pao. One Pao is a tabloid mm -hmm. newspaper for Chinese, right? And our target audience was the 50 year olds and above. Mm -hmm. And we didn't think that we were going to sell out, but we sold out. There was chaos, <laughs> right? There was a mass <laughs> chaos. And we had to, you know, there was crisis comms. We had to activate people. We had to call for new stock. It, it, was, it was insane, you know? And, and can I say that traditional media doesn't work? Absolutely no. not. It works if you know who your customer is and if you have the right offer at the right time. So there's a time and place for all of this, yeah. Brilliant. Krishna, quick take before we end this and totally then we can have questions offline as well. Yeah. So I don't think offline media will go away. Maybe the penetration will uh, vary. So I agree with Jonathan. You can't really replace TV and uh, radio. He gave a very brilliant example regarding the elderly. I don't need to answer anymore. It's perfect. Awesome. Perfect. Uh, we can have some more questions offline, uh, but uh, I'm being seriously threatened at the end saying just to, uh, <laughs> to let you guys for your uh, next session. But uh, once again, thank you very, very, very much. Uh, we had Jonathan from Huawei, we had Krishna from Sansan, and I'm from Neo Media World, part of Mindshare and Group M. And uh, I genuinely hope that uh, you took away three things at least from this session, uh, if not more. And uh, uh, thank you so much for being a patient audience, and uh, I look forward to connecting with you offline. Thank you so very much. Terrific uh, panel there. Please thanks again our panel this morning, Ashay, Jonathan and Krishna.